What on earth is going on with wildfires as they increase in intensity, frequency, and duration? I'm going to help you understand why and if we're to blame. We've all seen the horrifying images, land, homes, lives, all destroyed. This is California ravaged by fire. In Canada, early season fires send a toxic haze of smoke thousands of miles away into the deep south and across the Atlantic to Europe. Wildfires know no boundaries or borders across Asia, Europe, and the Americas. Increasingly hot and dry conditions have led to fire seasons that start earlier and last longer. But what role does climate change play and what can we do to protect ourselves? Hi, I'm Alexandra Steele. I'm a meteorologist and climate communication specialist. In this series about the wild world of extreme weather, I'll be introducing you to scientists, experts, and some of my friends, all in the fields of weather and climate. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Increased burning of fossil fuels like oil, coal, and gas is warming our air and our oceans, and our warmer planet is seeing extreme weather events as a result, like record heat and historic drought. It's also fueling wildfires with a trifecta of trouble. It's hotter, it's drier, and our forests are fragile and fatigued. When you have a hotter atmosphere, that tends to dry out vegetation more readily because more moisture from the vegetation will now evaporate into the air. So that dries them out and it makes them more prone to wildfire. And that's thought to be the, the dominant effect of climate change on wildfires due to the excess drying of the vegetation. And we boys sure have seen a dramatic change in wildfire behavior in the last oh, five or 10 years. California is at the center of the surge and on the front lines of fire. Since 2017, the state has logged three of its five deadliest fires on record and eight of its 10 biggest. More than 100 people have died. Tens of thousands have been displaced and millions more have been subjected to smoke and poor air. The wildfire risk in California has grown to such a level that some insurance companies won't even insure new homes or businesses. Dr. Don Lucas is the co-author of a study on California's wildfires. His research finds the surge in catastrophic wildfires is almost entirely due to anthropogenic climate change. In other words, it's us. That's the finding from our paper that there was a strong relationship between temperature and burned area. And as temperatures continue to increase, if our relationship holds, then we would expect burned area to continue to increase. California's wildfire season now lasts three months longer than it did in the 1970s. The fires are cresting over the uh, Sierras in California uh, for the very first time. So they're crossing the summit. They're happening, they seem to be happening both potentially earlier and later. We do see the season, the fire season lengthening. And so all of these are signals that, you know, I think there's more in store that we have to prepare for. But it's not just in California that large-scale wildfires are becoming more common. Since the year 2000, more than 70,000 wildfires have burned in the U.S. on average each year. That's more than double the annual average in the 1990s. And the fires that burn now, like the fast-moving fire in Maui, are much more devastating. According to ecologist Dr. Robert Scheller, increased heat and worsening drought is making landscapes across the world more flammable. There is a strong link between climate change and wildfires. Uh, it varies around the world, of course, as the effects of climate change vary around the world. And so some places we're seeing the early effects of climate change. We saw a very strong signal in California over the last 10 years, and now we're seeing a really strong signal in uh, northern latitudes, Canada, Russia, 
just extraordinary fires in these locations. In Canada, unprecedented early fires have sent smoke thousands of miles from their source. Climate change becoming visible in the form of poor air quality and smog. And climate is one of those um, areas where it can be challenging to communicate the impacts. Um, if you can't see it, if you can't feel it, then you don't think about it. But if you can, if you can go outside and you can see directly with your eyes the effects of, of fires and other climate events, then it helps uh, sort of elevate the importance of, of the problem and the impacts. Fires we see in the U.S., especially in the U.S. West, are getting larger, they're getting more intense, and they're burning more area. And so th this is really bad because the smoke from these wildfires travels long distances. Fires in California are affecting air quality on the U.S. East Coast. Fires in Canada are affecting air quality across the U.S. So that's one of the things about fire. It's not only affecting the people who live where the fire is, it's affecting all the rest of us as well. And especially young people, older people, pe people with pre-existing conditions, people with asthma. So this is a huge problem. And yeah, we know that climate change is having a significant effect on wildfire. But all wildfires are not created equal. In fact, they're as unique as the forests they're found in. So in California, Again, it's largely conifer forests, and you just think of all those needles underneath the conifer forests, and and those needles have uh, uh, chemicals that are really conducive to the fire. So you're going to get a different fire there than you would in eastern forests. So in the northeast, where you have a lot of maples, they have a very different. They produce a very different kind of fuel that are less likely to burn overall, and because it's not a conifer forest, you're not going to get huge flames up into the canopy. People used to say that eastern forests were Teflon forests that wouldn't burn. But today we're seeing droughts in the northeastern United States that, uh, again, now there's a risk of fires happening there. Lightning can spark a wildfire, but 80% of all wildfires are started by us, intentionally or not. And in our hotter and drier environment, a flick cigarette or unattended campfire can now fan the flames much farther and faster than ever before. But we can also help prevent wildfires and be ready for those that do come our way. Now, in regard to wildfires, what people can do is prepare for wildfire. People actually need to be aware what the fire regime is around them and what it could be and take appropriate actions as far as fire escaping their home and their yard to make sure it's safe. We want people to be safe. You can plant different trees around homes that are less flammable. So that's an effective strategy very locally. But when you're talking large areas, uh, the Appalachians, California, Canada, uh, tree planting will have limited utility at those really large scales. And in California, fire prevention is quite a complex problem. That's a, uh, a, a an ongoing debate and um, and challenge is that you know how can we continue to develop in areas that are prone um, for fires and at, at high risk? What do we do about our infrastructure? We've seen in recent years that California, particularly Northern California, many of the fires seem to have been triggered by infrastructure and utility lines and things. So what can we do to help harden that infrastructure, make it more resistant to fire so that we can still continue to, to live in, in these areas as the climate is changing? As climate change loads the dice for future fire seasons, the best firewall may be knowing the threat where you live and how to protect yourself. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. For more climate change information, visit our website at climateconnections.org.